Libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson is also on the campaign trail, addressing voters and supporters in Des Moines, Iowa last Saturday. He talked about a range of issues, including marriage equality, health care, immigration, and the legalization of marijuana. He also discussed the importance of being included in the presidential debates and how so social media is helping him attract more supporters. This is an hour. Very, very much. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey. <laughs> is this the craziest election ever? Yeah. yeah. And we know how crazy it is, right? I'm going to be the next president of the United States. That's how crazy it is. <laughs> you know, people ask me all the time, um, gosh, it's got to be cool to be a former governor. What's that like? In New Mexico, I kid you not, people wave at me with all five fingers, not just one. <laughs> Beyond my wildest dreams, Bill Weld is my running mate. Oh my gosh. Woo! <laughs> he uh, had served one term prior to my taking office, and then I got elected. And he was known as the smartest governor in the room. Everybody acknowledged Bill Weld as the smartest governor. Uh, Brainy Bill. Brainy Bill, uh, Honest Gary. That's what we're going to try and apply our nicknames ahead of time. <laughs> but the two of us coming together, two former Republican governors that served two terms each in heavily Democrat states, fiscally conservative, over the top, socially inclusive, I think I've just described the majority of Americans in this country. I'd also like to add that I think the majority of citizens in this country also have a real skepticism about our foreign military policy that has us as the world's policemen uh, as opposed to, look, if we're attacked, we're going to attack back and that, in fact, we do have to have an invincible national defense and military superiority, but being the world's policeman has come at a great cost. I have always lived my life believing that if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. It's really easy. And And success in life is really dictated by how we deal with failure. Failure is something that presents itself all the time. I mean, every single day we come up against it. And every single day, figuring that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's life. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And do we curl up in a ball, declare ourselves victims? Or do we get a smile on our face and realize this is part of the process and get up tomorrow and deal with it? Well, let's have a smile on our face, get up tomorrow and deal with it because it's how we deal with success that ultimately determines failure. I have one bit of advice for everybody here today, uh, and my advice is worth uh, exactly what you're paying for it, which is nothing. But my advice is, is that whatever it is you do, whatever it is that you know, apply it entrepreneurially. There will never be a greater reward than creating your own job or creating jobs for others. And government can play a role in reducing the barriers for you and I to be able to do that. And right now, there is one area in our lives that create equal opportunity for all of us and that's the internet. We have the ability, each and every one of us, to compete with anyone in the world individually. And I have to tell you right now that the government is poised to pass a whole bunch of legislation. They're going to pass legislation under the guise of equality, but the reality is going to be uh, it's going to restrict a lot of us from being able to do that. Bill Weld and I will stand up against that infringement uh, on equal opportunity that will exist.
I do think that the model of the future is Uber everything, all right? Uber electrician, Uber plumber, Uber doctor, Uber accountant, where the middleman is eliminated to allow you as the provider of goods and services to directly deliver those goods and services to an end user who's going to pay less for it. Uh, you're going to make more for it, eliminating the middleman. I think it's really exciting. And I think we've just seen the tip of the iceberg of the sharing economy. Airbnb. Uh, is there a better place to visit uh, than Iowa in the summer? Um, no, not really. There isn't. <laughs> Too hot. I'm thinking of the lakes. I'm thinking of the lakes. Anyway, it is, it is a beautiful state. But Airbnb. I'm talking to a young lady in uh, Baltimore. Uh, she was 26 years old, got her PhD in science, and she said, hey, uh, I have these horrible student debts, and I figured out a way to pay back these student debts. Airbnb, renting out my place, making enough money to actually pay back my student debts, and guess what? The city of Baltimore came in and said no to Airbnb. This is politics. This is crony capitalism. This is when the government injects itself in the economy and unfairly takes away opportunity that you and I could have competing with others. And believe me, this presents itself all the time. And as governor of New Mexico, I saw this legislation that passed all the time, that gave unfair advantage to those that had money and influence, and it gave them more money and influence. Bill Weld and I are not looking to get elected king or dictator. We're looking to get elected president and vice president, and we're planning uh, a partnership, really something unique. Uh, getting two for the price of one. Um, I, I think that it's a real positive. But what you can count on, us being president and vice president, is certainty. And there will be certainty when it comes to tax policy that taxes will get simpler. We'll always sign on to make ta making taxes simpler. We'll always sign on to reducing taxes. And reducing taxes, that's money out of your and my pockets that we can be spending on our lives as opposed to government knowing best. And then rules and regulations. Contrary to what most people, maybe most people think, rules and regulations benefit those that are already uh, in places of power and influence and dissuade those of us that would like to compete with them ultimately. So back to this equal opportunity level playing field. There are three scenarios in this upcoming election. Let's see, we elect Trump, we elect Clinton. Does anybody believe that the polarity that exists between Democrats and Republicans today, they want to kill each other. Does anybody believe that that's going to get any better giving, given an election of Trump or Clinton? No. No way. Now then there's the third scenario. Two former Republican governors, libertarians, getting elected president, vice president, down that big six-lane highway down the middle, hiring a bipartisan administration. Democrats, Republicans. Liber libertarians, Every, everybody's going to be libertarian leaning, okay? But bipartisan administration calling out both sides to come on, come on and let's deal with the problems that this country is facing. I think that third scenario has the possibility of actually succeeding. I agree 100% with Hillary Clinton's number one issue in this campaign. I agree 100% with Donald Trump's number one issue in this campaign. I would not vote for Trump if I were Clinton, and I would not vote for Clinton if I were Trump.
libertarians, common sense. Keep government out of my bedroom, keep government out of my pocketbook, and stop supporting regime change that has made the world less safe, not more safe. <laughs> fiscally conservative. Why be fiscally conservative? Why balance the federal budget? And Bill and I, not king, Nick, not dictator, but pledging to submit a balanced budget to Congress over the first 100 days, the reason to balance the federal budget is for future generations. My generation has screwed it up for those that are young, and we've got to fix it. And to balance the federal budget, that is about the future, that is about dealing with the entitlements, Medicaid and Medicare. Neither Donald Trump nor Hillary Clinton say they're going to do anything regarding either of them other than Hillary saying that she's going to expand both of them. Well, the only way that we're going to fix Medicaid and Medicare, in my opinion, is to devolve those functions to the states. Fifty laboratories of innovation and best practice where there would be fabulous innovation that would get emulated uh, and I believe in my heart of hearts, having been governor of New Mexico, if the federal government would have block granted the state of New Mexico a fixed amount of money less for Medicaid, that I could have drawn new lines of eligibility, had a safety net, and saved that amount of money. I believe the only way we save Medicare is to do the same thing, something that is currently the federal government, but devolve that to the states. Same scenario. Washington is incapable of one-size-fits-all. And we can't dig our ha heads in the sand either about Social Security. It is headed to insolvency. We have to address Social Security. It's not about cutting Social Security, but it is about reforming it so that it will be around for future generations. And that means raising the retirement age for one thing. You could have a very fair means testing when it comes to Social Security. Should you get back more money than what you paid in, given a certain level of income? Like I say, I think there could be a very, very fair, fair means testing. And you can't cut the federal government by 20 percent if you're not going to cut the military by 20 percent. And that's... <laughs> and that is not compromising the military. We need to have an invincible national defense. We have to maintain military superiority. But the Pentagon itself, through the BRAC Commission in the mid-90s, advocated that 25 percent of U.S. bases could be closed, but there has not been the political will to do that. And Bill Weld and myself, neither of us had served, have served in any other political capacity other than governors of our states. We didn't know that sacred cows existed. So it was coming in and really starting over from scratch, creating budgets uh, that actually accomplished things and scrapping things um, that didn't. And so when it comes to the military, why is it that we always add and add and add and we never reevaluate because there is that much excess in the federal government? Immigration. We should be embracing immigration in this country. We are a country of immigrants. The Wharton School of Business. Let's see, Wharton School of Business. That's where Donald Trump got his degree, wasn't it? But the Wharton School of Business did um, uh, publish three weeks ago in the Wall Street Journal uh, the economic impact of restricting immigration. It was going to have a negative impact on our economy. They analyzed allowing high-skilled workers into this country, uh, more high-skilled workers. The impact was going to be a very slight positive on our economy. And the last scenario was increasing immigration dramatically, which would have an a very overwhelming positive impact on our economy. I am speaking as a border state governor, 
Uh, the deportation of 11 million undocumented workers is based in untruth uh, and misunderstanding uh, completely. They are not taking jobs that U.S. citizens want. They're hardworking. They're the cream of the crop when it comes to workers. Statistically, they commit less crime than U.S. citizens, building a fence across the border. You know, Donald Trump was watching the Olympics really closely, too, right? How high do the Mexican pole vaulters go? <laughs> and he's talking about he's going to make sure that there aren't tunnels underneath. Look, these are hard-working individuals that if you or I were in the same position, which was there are jobs across the border that U.S. citizens don't want, I want to take care of my family, but I can't get across the border to take these jobs because there's no line at all to actually be able to cross legally. So we should just make it as easy as possible for somebody that wants to come into this country and work to be able to get a work visa, and a work visa should entail should entail a background check and a social security card that taxes get paid. I do believe in free markets. Free markets is devoid of government interference. Crony capitalism is government getting involved, picking winners and losers. And unfortunately, I think that the majority of Americans have come to associate crony capitalism and free market as one and the same when, in fact, they are opposites. Hillary Clinton, with this pay-to-play thing, for the longest time I was wondering about Bill Clinton and the fact that he was getting these enormous speaking fees. I always thought that, well, that was sort of kind of payola for him having been president, when come to find out, and this is just over the last couple of weeks, really, this has been speaking fees that were tied to contracts that were, literally, um, that were literally signed the next day by Hillary as Secretary of State to grant preference in countries, and I speak to Haiti specifically, and, and Ericsson. Look, this is not right. This is not ethical. Term limits. I do believe that term limits is a silver bullet. <clears throat> If we had term limits, <clears throat> I think we would do the right thing as opposed to whatever it takes to get reelected. If we had term limits today, we would not have a $20 trillion national debt. I said earlier, we're not getting elected <clears throat> king, we're not getting elected dictator, but if I could wave a magic wand regarding tax policy, I would abolish income tax, I would abolish corporate tax, and I would replace it with one federal consumption tax, believing that tens, and by the way, who pays for corporate tax? We pay for corporate tax. Don't, 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 let's not kid ourselves. But with zero corporate tax, tens of millions of Ameri tens of millions of jobs would get created in this country for no other reason than zero corporate tax. And I believe that 80% of Washington lobbyists would get issued pink slips because that's why they're there, to garner tax favor. What's, what's needed when it comes to health care? And by the way, President Obama's Affordable Health Care Act, uh, I have to agree with Chief Justice Roberts that it's a tax. My insurance Health insurance premiums have quadrupled, and I haven't seen a doctor in three years. It's a tax. But what do we need to reform health care in this country? Well, what we need to reform health care in this country is ge a genuine free market approach to health care, something that, by the way, is about as far removed as it possibly can be from free market currently. If we had a free market for health care, you and I would not have insurance to cover ourselves for ongoing medical need. We would have insurance to cover ourselves for catastrophic injury and catastrophic illness, and we would pay as you go in a system that would be very, very affordable. How affordable? I'm going to guess one-fifth 
of what it currently costs. We would have advertised pricing. We would have advertised outcomes. We would have gallbladders are us. We would have stitches are us. We'd have x-rays are us. It would be very, very competitive, and government can play a role in really bringing about competition, wellness to our health care system as opposed to dealing with the end result. Right now, when we go to a doctor, we have no idea what it's going to cost. The person at the desk has no idea what it's going to cost. And when we get the So health care, <laughs> we have no idea what it's going to cost. And when we get the bill, we know that nobody's actually going to pay that bill, right? Libertarians always coming down on the side of choice, that you and I as individuals should be able to make choices in our lives that are going to affect our lives as long as those choices don't adversely affect others. As governor of New Mexico, I was more outspoken than any governor in the country regarding school choice, that we should bring competition to public education. In my opinion, if we could unleash a million educational entrepreneurs on our educational system, I think it would have profound, dramatic impact on our educational system. But what is, it, what is the one thing that the federal government could do to improve on education? It would be to abolish the Federal Department of Education. And it's, And it's all a dollars and cents thing. Look, I think we think that the Department of Education was established under George Washington. It was established under Jimmy Carter. And the, the Federal Department of Education, Iowa gives Washington 13 cents. It's your money. You give Washington 13 cents. Bureaucratic wash and dry cycle, and Iowa gets back 11 cents. How do you like that trade? And then when they give you back their, the 11 cents, they tell you that you have to do A, B, C, and D to get your 11 cents, and it costs 15 cents to accomplish the 11 cents. So why not Iowans, why, don't Iowa, why doesn't Iowa just keep the 6 cents in the first place, apply it to the classroom, more money in the classroom, and I dare say that decisions are always best at the local level. Decisions are always best when it's you and I that can be making those decisions. So there are a couple of other agencies that come to mind. One is the Department of Commerce. I think that that is all about crony capitalism. Although there's, there is intellectual rights, uh, there's copyright, in the Department of Commerce, but I don't know if that requires an entire agency. There's also housing and urban development, which has completely outlived its usefulness, completely. Uh, homeland security? Why do we have homeland security in this country? Isn't that, wasn't that the FBI? I mean, couldn't that be folded in? And homeland security vehicles on the road, you gotta be seeing a few of them these days. What in the hell do they do? I have no idea. Do you, do you have any idea what they do? I don't. Personal, 
personal choice, um, marriage equality, supporting marriage equality. And I know Iowa really took a lead on all that. How, how can there be a more difficult uh, decision in anyone's life uh, other than abortion? And when I say anyone's life, I'm talking about the woman involved and her decision making. But who but that woman involved should be making that choice other than the woman involved? Yeah. Marijuana. Let's legalize marijuana in this country. There are tens of millions of Americans who are convicted felons that but for our drug laws would otherwise be tax-paying, law-abiding citizens. We have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world, and I refuse to believe that we are any less law-abiding in this country. But it has to do with our drug laws, it has to do with mandatory min uh, minimums, the main category of prisoner in federal, court, in federal prison today is the individual who has sold small amounts of drugs on numerous occasions and been caught. Let's bring an end to the war on drugs. Let's Let's first and foremost recognize drugs as a health problem, not a criminal justice problem. <laughs> Let me say this, all lives matter, okay? All lives matter. But black lives matter, and here's why. Blacks are being shot at six times the rate than if you are white. If you are of color, there's a four times more likelihood that if you are arrested, you're going to end up in jail than if you are white. We've had our heads in the sand over this issue, and I count myself in as the first one to have my head in the sand over this issue. We have to come to terms with this. We have to recognize that there is discrimination that exists, and we have to end this discrimination in our country. I absolutely support the Second Amendment to the Constitution, our ability to own firearms. But we should be open to a debate on how we keep, a debate, a discussion on how we keep firearms out of the hands of the mentally ill. And we should also be open to a discussion and a debate on how we keep guns out of the hands of would-be terrorists. As President of the United States, I would love to know what transpired between the FBI and the shooter in Orlando. Obviously, the system worked up to a certain point, uh, but then it broke down, and I'll bet the FBI has some real suggestions on how we might fo move forward on that issue. The death penalty. Uh, I've been asked many times, did you ever reverse yourself? Did you ever change your mind on a major issue? I changed my mind on the death penalty, and here's the reason why. Is it costs more money to keep a person on death row or to sentence a person to death row than it does to lock themselves up for the rest of their lives because of the appeals that go along with being on death row. Well, when you find out that someone is released because they're categorically proven to be innocent, what value can you put on attorney fees associated with that, those, that value is limitless. There is estimated to be up to a 4% error rate in the death penalty. I don't know about you, but I don't want to punish one innocent person to punish 999 that are guilty, much less put to death four for 96 that are guilty. And when I was governor of New Mexico, Governor Ryan of Illinois ordered a review of 36 inmates on death row. 20, over 20 of them were released because they were categorically shown to be innocent because of DNA testing. So as public policy, the death penalty is flawed as public policy.
There was a poll among active military personnel three weeks ago on who they favored for President of the United States. And by the way, thank you to all veterans. Thank you to everyone who has served this country in this audience. Thank you. We have a debt to all of you, every one of you. But in that poll of active military personnel, I won. I was first. I'd like to think it's based on what I'm saying, which is let's have judicious use of our military. If we're attacked, we're going to attack back. We should have an invincible national defense. We should demonstrate military superiority. But when we involve ourselves in regime change, it results in a less safe world. And in my lifetime, I cannot think of one instance where we inject ourselves in a civil war and it turns out for the better. So we have regime change in Iraq. We wipe out Al-Qaeda, Saddam Hussein. Now we have a void that was created. And uh, as of two years ago, we'd never heard of ISIS. but. Along comes ISIS to fill that void. And they exist in Libya and Syria. And this is not intentional, but this is Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. They supported regime change in both of those countries, Syria, Libya. They went in and supported the opposition in both of those countries. Well, the opposition, although not directly allied with ISIS, both ISIS and the opposition were against the existing regimes. We armed the opposition to the teeth. The opposition got beaten, and all the arms ended up in ISIS hands. This is what we're dealing with right now. The biggest threat in the world right now is North Korea. And the fact that at some point, these intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to work. We have 40,000 troops in South Korea. Imagine if there were 40,000 Chinese troops in Central America. And if you're thinking, well, we have 40,000 troops in South Korea because we want to protect against invasion from North Korea, there is zero chance of, North Korea, of South Korea getting conventionally invaded by North Korea. They have their own forces to withstand that, and it's a no contest. If you're talking about them lobbing nuclear weapons over the border, We've got them covered with our nuclear umbrella, but that's the threat. And that is a very real threat. Do we really want to go to nuclear war with North Korea? So the way that we deal with this is to join hands with China diplomatically, because they understand the, the threat that this poses. And in Syria, the solution to Syria, the solution to the Syrian civil war is joining with Russia diplomatically uh, to bring an end uh, to that. Has life ever been better in this country? Ever? I mean, we get along with one another better. We communicate better with one another. Our kids are smarter than ever. We've got issues, but we've got unbelievable opportunity. And we are citizens of the greatest country on the earth. And yeah, we've got issues, but we're going to deal with these issues. And the future looks unbelievably promising. As President, as President of the United States, I am also promising you that I am going to be the most frugal president that has ever occupied that space of anyone that you've seen. You gotta lead by example, and the fact that the President of the United States spends tens of millions of dollars to go down to Walgreens because of the security involved in doing that, goes into large city and snarls traffic uh, everywhere uh, that he goes, she may go, um, that is something that um, I think needs to come to an end. Uh, Bill Weld and myself are promising to be very, very good stewards of this office, and that starts with setting an example for spending and government and the role that government should play.
There is no chance, no chance that I have, Bill Weld has, of getting elected president or vice president without being in the presidential debates. And the Presidential Debate Commission has said that you have to be at 15 percent in the polls to be in the presidential debates. I have no issue with the 15 percent either. But here's the issue, is there is not one single poll being conducted today where my name is in the top line. Not one. My name is in 50 percent of the polls, and it's the third or fourth question down. And then 99% of the media just reports the top line, so that about 70% of America only think, doesn't even know that I exist. And by I exist, we are the only third party candidates on the ballot in all 50 states. So I want to ask all of you a favor, and that's to push out what it is that we do from a social media standpoint. We had a rally in Vermont. Uh, we had a rally uh, last night in Milwaukee. There was a turnout that was just terrific, as terrific as right here, right now. Thank you very much. But within, from, that, from the time that rally ended until now, there have been more than three million people that have viewed that rally uh, on social media. So this is very, very real. This is very, very real. The possibility exists to run the table on this election. And for all the right reasons, you have to hear it all the time. You're going to waste your vote. The comeback immediately is wasting your vote is voting for somebody you don't believe in. That's wasting your vote. So to each and every one of you, you rock. I can't believe that you're here on a Saturday afternoon, but you are here. Thank you very, very much. Let's make a difference in this election. Let's make a difference in this election. Thank you. Thank you.
So, so my understanding, and Cato Institute, I'm not doing this in a void. No, so, yeah. So the, the staff at Chapman University, free market guys, uh, Jeff Myron, Cato, all of them say that TPP is an improvement, a big improvement, that it reduces hundreds of tariffs. But how can we trust something? I mean, obviously, corporate lawyers don't have our country's best interests at heart, and their their whole thing is just like it's all or nothing, you know? And then you got President Obama that wants to fast track it, you know? I just think that... You know, there's. Believe me, I, 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 the, the, the rub, the rub, it, as far as I can see, is a, is wrong. That it does dramatically improve uh, trade, and ultimately, it's more U.S. jobs. I, That's my belief. I'm all for free trade. I agree with you 100 percent on that. But like, just for me, it's just like you know, if you have something that's written by corporate lawyers, you can't possibly believe that well, they will put in the best interest oh, but, of. But, I mean, but we're by talking corporate about lawyers. I mean, no, no. Well. It, protecting intellectual property, I mean, that's a big component of it all. I agree with that, but like when you're talking about, so like, okay, so like the, um, the Keystone XL, you know, they're, they're, suing us, they're suing us for $13 billion on profits lost. It's something that can happen and it won't be taken up in our, in our court systems. It'll be on an international board of lawyers, essentially, that we well, and, and, and that ultimately protect U.S. interests. I mean, this is the, this is the this is the overwhelming consensus of free market guys. I, for me, it's just like I can't understand how they can do something in secrecy and not let us know what it is. And well, then now they want to now they want to like shuffle it through just like everything else. You're talking about something that has 19 chapters, only six chapters are talk, actually talk about trade. The rest of it talks about uh, internet restrictions, pharmaceutical prices. I mean, you're bundling all of this stuff into something that's supposed to be a trade agreement, you know? And then they're like, well, no, no, no amendments can be made. I'm just saying, I, I like, I, 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 I like your point, and I, I, I'd like to, I'd like to see your. What's that? Great things. I don't mean to take up all your time. Good luck. Good luck with everything. Thank you, Rick Stewart. I got the three sponsors out of the first National Debate Commission four years ago. We're gonna get you in this fall. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I'm 11, and this is my dad. Yeah. And I am like the biggest Gary Johnson. I bet I'm the biggest Gary Johnson supporter. And I just want to say that me and my friends specifically were big into pop culture and stuff. And we believe that you are going to be the best. You are the best. Tell me your name. Braylon Etzer. Braylon, let's take a picture. Thank you. 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 Thank
my husband will be here, so he's going to be jealous. All Thank right, you, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Really, thank you for being here. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much no for problem. being here. Gary, I'm a felon. This is my first time voting, and I just registered Libertarian this year. Did <laughs> you sign my card? I would be flattered. Thank you. <laughs> just, yeah, sign her anyway. Right. Yeah, one Thank more. you so much. Hopefully we'll do something about one more field mind. I asked to borrow yeah. his, his yeah. marker. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's a bad marker. She might have a better one. Sir, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so luck. much. There you go. Can I sneak in a picture? Yeah, real quick? yeah, do it. Excellent. All right. Thanks for coming. Hey, thank out. you for being here. Thank, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I have you. a question yeah. for you. I'm a pharmacy student. At yes. Yes. I was wondering if you have any opinion on pharmacists getting uh, practitioner uh, prescribing status. Yes. The, well, there's an example of. Doesn't that make sense? It, I feel it does, yeah. and most of my uh, pharmacist colleagues do, because I mean it takes so much pressure off of. The well, and you staff. and you understand the drugs. You understand what they do, right? And and, and, and disclaim right now. And, and 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 indemnification. I mean, legislation that passes that indemnifies somebody, um, meaning yourself, from doing that. But as a consumer, I make that choice, and I save a whole lot of money. And and pharmacists are being trained so far above. Yes. What we're yeah. To yeah. Do yeah. At the no. 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 Time. A great example of just what I'm talking about: a, a genuine free market approach, more competition. That would be a, just a logical. I know for the last several years, it's been being tried to pass and tried to pass. And it, yeah. bills have been going through, and it keeps getting stopped and keeps getting stopped. And I know all the reasons why it keeps getting stopped. I mean, I saw that firsthand. And I, I know that. You know, the doctors, there's such an overburden to yeah, yeah. the medical yeah. staff as it is that for things like simple... We are on the same page. Things like that, we are on the same page. It takes page. so much pressure off the doctors and the overburden. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Work on it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, there you Thanks are. Thanks so much. I love yes. your message. The very oh, thank you. Thank you. I wish you well. You oh, can, thank you. And then I, if you can do a couple of those, it would be nice. Thank you. We don't know when we'll see you the next time. So. And then I also had like a couple other new pads. I don't know if we have time. It's kind of the blue ones, the blue and orange ones. Those as well. Okay, this will do it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. All right. You're on your way to a great start. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Right. Yes. Maybe at the top of the list. That's great. I was going to ask you how many times I remember you talking on some cable show about how many times you vetoed tax increases. Uh, like 400 and so oh, yeah, I, I, 750 oh bills. oh my gosh I knew it was some astronomical amount so I, uh, when did you start your campaign for running with well this, this when, year when, yeah, yeah when, this when, year like, that like, when, well. like what month was it kind of like in um, like sometime during the so uh, uh, April is actually when, when we started oh, right oh. there that will be your last one very good well thank you so much <laughs> thank it's you. a pleasure well, thank you. You've been. I know. You're mountain climbing and you're. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, you're biking talents. Thank you. It's an honor. I'd like to let you know I'm a member of the Active Duty Legacy. Yes. Yes. I can tell you, after spending a decade specializing in the Korean Peninsula, you oh, presented the most cogent example of policies. Oh, that man. You've there. made my afternoon. No, really. Thank you. Would you like to put a picture of me? Not at all. Not at really all. Thank you for that. No, absolutely. For that. Yes. yes thank you. Oh, no. Thank you. Yeah, no, Would you sign this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you happen to have a pen? I don't. Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am, could I get that pen from you for two seconds? Oh, oh. sure. Would you mind? Thank you so much.
hope that's truly an honor, sir. Oh, my. And I, I, I look forward for to being my commander in chief. <laughs> Where are you going to after this, this Governor? <laughs> this is like, this is like number 14. <laughs> this is like 14. <laughs> Where, are going, Where are you going to after this, Governor? Oh, uh, back to New Mexico for a okay. couple of days. Okay. Well, you know, today is actually the Iowa Hawkeyes and the I know. Cycles, but you should go Iowa City. Everybody's there. Great. I'm running for the Iowa House District 39. Nice. Libertarian. Nice. So oh, this, man. This will go Good on luck. my page as your We're endorsement, on, even if you don't actually say it. We're on each other's coattails. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, so, um, if you do make it uh, be president of the United States, would you change the rules for the 15% or third parties to get into debates, or would you keep it? Yeah. Well, here, here's the, here's the criteria that I think. And, and by the way, I don't. The president's not deciding this. This is the Republicans and Democrats. But the rule change should be anybody who can get who could mathematically get 270 electoral votes should at a minimum be in the polls. So in 2012, that would have included the Green Party and the Libertarian Party. Right now, uh, it would also include the Green Party and the Libertarian Party. Yeah, as being capable of actually being able to be elected. Do you think the Libertarians might be able to be involved in that? Mexico being president? Yeah, I think, yeah, no, I, it, it's what's fair. It's what's fair. Yeah, and it's just so hard to get on the ballot in all 50 states. It's really, like, impossible. Can we get a picture anyway, right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. All right, that's good. Great. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Great. Let's do it. Oh, I want us to take a yeah, picture. Sure, okay. <laughs> no, we've got the selfie thing. That's perfect. Go. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Let's do it. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 Congratulations, yeah. congratulations yeah. on the <laughs> ride. Right. Yeah. I have a question. Thank you. There we go. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question yeah. while we do this? Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. I work with people who are getting out of incarceration, yeah. and most yeah. of them committed crimes under the influence of drugs. Yeah. So legalizing drugs to me makes that scary, especially with well, the... marijuana. Legalizing marijuana. That's the only drug I'm advocating legalizing. I feel a little better about that. Huh? I feel a little better about that. It's yeah. more like more drunk drivers on the road, but... Well, and that, that's where government has a role, is to keep those that are impaired off the road. So a big okay. component of legalizing pot is also establishing impairment, okay. something that hasn't been done. And then the borders, immigrants coming over the borders, my experience is that they send all their money home. So we pay for the free lunches and the things like that. They earn money and they send it home out of this country. So I see a dream there. Well, but it's th them spending U.S. dollars, so yeah. it, it's an overwhelming positive to our economy to have them here taking jobs that we don't want, buying homes, uh, in taking, buying food, buying cars. I mean, they are an integral part of uh, the economy here. I am. Trust me, I'm a, I'm a, a governor, a former governor of New Mexico. Let's see, Iowa. Where is Iowa? And where is New Mexico? Well, gee, I, I don't know. Just trust me on this one. This, this one is a political boogeyman. This doesn't exist. Oh, of course. I'm a retired yeah. Navy veteran. I'm glad you're in this camp. Oh, thank you. Give me something to vote for. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Hey. hey. Right, really nice to meet you. Good to like, meet you. Oh, I know your time is. I just no, want to have no. a handshake here with you. Oh, you look good, man. Thank you. Hey, you know what? You're the truth. <laughs> there we go. I like it. I'll, I'll still be around, so I'll I know you pound will. in some campaign stuff. Switch places hey. if you can. Yeah. Uh, we'll swap out here. Oh, I love it. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Man, you're cute. Your mom must be beautiful. She is. She really is. <laughs> I'm just We're kidding. very lucky. <laughs> Could I get you to sign a couple yeah, things? Yeah. 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 Baseball here. She's got a huge present for her. I like her. Thank you very much. I don't have it. Thank you. Whoops. <laughs> Be challenging some days. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, this is. Oh, yeah. You you got your hands full. Anyway, thank you for being here. Yeah, no really problem. Appreciate you being here. This is the first time I've really heard much about you, so I'm happy you came. Good morning. Thank you. Well, this is mine actually. So I guess I got a signature here. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you guys are going to do this someday. And you'll do a much better job of it, too. Nah, you got anyway, this one in the thank bag. You. Thank Can you so I get much. a personal picture? Yeah, you bet. You bet. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm not an expert at these things, damn it. Which is pathetic because I'm a computer dude. There we go. Perfect. Oh, thanks, sir. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I have been getting a picture with all the candidates that we've had with this scarf on. I didn't think so. I did not think so. All right, great. Thank you. Can I get you the sign? Yeah, yeah. Shaking hands with the next president of the United States. Yeah. 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 Think positive. Oh yeah. <laughs> positive thinking. Yeah. Thank you. You know, you, you've gotten a few of these signatures. Okay. You've gotten, you got like twelve, I think. <laughs> okay, we gotta go, folks. When you get into debates, give them hell. Show them what a good guy. One more. Thank you so much for being. Thank you so much for being here. How'd you get roped into this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Well, and thank you for being here, too. Oh. Really appreciate it. Oh, my gosh, shake your hand. That's there we go. Marine Corps veteran and a lifelong <laughs> Iowan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to Iowa. Here we go. Do it together. All right. This guy's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you so much, sir. So cool. 
Congratulations. Thank you for coming to Iowa. I appreciate it. I get a photo? I also have a question. Yeah. What is your pre-race ritual? I have a half marathon tomorrow. Start to the side. <laughs> Just eat as much as you possibly can. But here's here's the so you you've done a lot. Of, yeah, it's my second half this year. All right. I've never ever had a bad result when I started off really really slow. Never. Gotcha. Right. Thanks, I appreciate anyway, that. Uh, okay. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks, everyone. How's it going? I'm running. Good? I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I have a wedding tonight, so I decided to stop by. Gary. Let's finally get married. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I like the shirt. Thank you, man. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Can thanks, man. Can I, uh, Central Region Director. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm running your Kansas, oh, Missouri. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. All right, I got two. Try it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Try to get down to Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. It's Sunday, I walked around Dubuque. I talked to 400 people. I just held the yard sign, and I walked around downtown Dubuque. All of them knew who you were, and only two of them said they weren't voting for you. Oh, man, okay, well, thank, you. thank you. Will you do one of these two? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, yeah, thank yeah, you so much for everything. Oh, you. thank you all. You all are just awesome. Thank you. Thank Great you. to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, same. Same. The day I spent, uh, Bill Richardson, I assume, where I am. Uh, yeah. yeah, I worked on Bill Richardson's campaign. Oh. No? When he was here at House Party and all this and that. But uh, <laughs> I wish you the best. Uh, He's better than that one. I spent 22 years. In the regular army, 17 of them in army intelligence. And when we have a secretary of state that doesn't even know how to write a classified document or know what's classified, it just blows my mind that she can be so arrogant. Well, and it just and this goes Democrat, on and on and on. Yeah, between the two of them, this Democrat but can't move to either one of them. So, best to you. Thank you. Take a picture. Yes. Yes. Kansas City. I don't think yeah. Kansas City. Oh, oh yes. Man. Hey, this is New York Yankee Week. We're not doing kids. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank Great. you for what Thank you just say about Black Lives Matter. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, can I get a picture? I don't mean to your time, but I have a small podcast with questions I want to answer. Who do I need to talk to about um, yeah. getting an interview? <laughs> What? Media at johnsonwell 2016. Media at johnsonwell.com. M E D I A at johnsonwell.com. Media at johnsonwell.com. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's covered. Hold on. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you, Governor. I got that. Well, there you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, my husband's active duty military. He has a 15. He's in the Marine Corps. He continues to He's going to look up in a second. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Where are you? Right there. Yep. Thank you. All right. Great. They're out. Gary, can I get a picture really quick? Oh, yeah. Picture, man. One, two, three. All right. You got to go. Hi, I'm from Santa Fe. Good luck to you. Oh, man. We love you, Governor. May I get one? Can we get one picture? Me and my brother. Yeah, do it. All right, do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My son, thank you so much. All right, look at me smile. You're his first presidential vote. Thank you. 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 Thank you.